Props are an incredibly important part of working with Vue because of course what we're eventually going to do is break up things into different components and we need to allow them components to access data that we pass through to them. So as an example, what we're going to do is render out a list of users, but each of them users are going to have their own component and we're going to pass each of them users down as a prop. So let's once again look at how we would do this using the options API and then we'll discuss how we do this with the composition API. And it's actually not that much different unless you need to start getting involved with things like computed properties, which we're going to look at. So inside of our data here, let's create our a users array. And inside of here, we'll just have a list of users. So we're going to have an ID in here. We'll have a name in here, just the kind of standard stuff we're used to when we are demoing this out. And we'll just stick with two users for now. So what we're going to do is create a new component, which will allow us to iterate through both of these users, passing each of these objects down as a prop into this new template. So what we would normally do in fact, what we would do with the composition API is still define out our list of props. The reason being is that when we do have a list of props, it's good practice to check whether they're required or set whether they're required and also set their data type as well. So in this case, we know that a user component is going to take a user prop in. We can say that this is required because we're almost always going to assume that we're going to use this component's output a user. So making it required makes sense. And we're also going to define out a type as well. So when you're working with view three, doing this is great. There's nothing wrong with still defining your list of props out as you need them. Validating props within a setup method would be an absolute nightmare, although you can access them within setup. And I'll show you that in just a second. So in here, we won't do too much. We'll just output the user's name. Maybe that's enough for now. And in here, let's import that new user component from that component that we've just created and we can still of course use the components property in here to define out the list of components that we need access to within our template nothing in this sense has changed with the composition api so now what we can do is we can output a user for each of them users so we do a v4 on each of them users we set a key, of course, a unique key. So uh, view, know how, uh, view knows how to update this. And we pass that user down as a prop. Pretty straightforward. You've probably seen something like this before. So we end up with Alex and Billy. Now let's quickly convert this example over to rather than use data, use our setup instead. We know how simple this is. We can use ref or reactive for this. So let's create out a user's reactive value here and take this data that we previously had and pop it inside of there and of course that would probably come through from an api and be set we've already seen an example of that so uh, that should be pretty obvious and then we just return that user's value and that's going to have exactly the same effect as we've already seen so it works in exactly the same way now let's talk about props now we've not included a setup method in here just yet but what we want to know is is this value here still reactive if we update the prop within say user id one or update the data within user with an id of one will that be passed through and still be reactive in this component well let's just create out a really simple timeout here to map through the users and change uh, the first user's information over so i'm going to create a timeout in here and let's just make that for two seconds so we can catch it and I'm going to go ahead and update the value of users. Remember, this is a ref, so we're accessing the value. And we're going to go uh, and iterate over or map over each of them users. So this is just what you would normally do within uh, data with the options API. We get a user for each of them and we return the modified user if it's been modified. And then, of course, what we do is just do a little check here. So I'm just going to say if the user ID is one, then I'm going to go ahead and set the user's uh, points we could implement some kind of points in here to a thousand so let's go over here and bring in some kind of points value just so we can see this data change because it's unlikely that the user's name would change in the context of doing this so we're uh, mapping through after two seconds and updating the user's points to a thousand just for user with an id of one so let's go over to here and output them users points and see if these are reactive like so and if we come over we should see after two seconds 
that update to a thousand. So we know that without using the composition API within this component here, this value is being updated. Great. So we don't need to do anything if that's the case in terms of the composition API. If your component solely exists to represent the user's information here, you don't need to do anything at all. But what happens if we want to say format the points in here? Well, what we would have to do then if we wanted to make use of the composition API, we would have to bring in that setup method. Of course, if we wanted to format the points normally, we would bring in with the options API a computed property. So for example, we might have a formatted points in here, which returns to us this user point and then formats it in some way. Now I've actually gone ahead and I've pulled in the numeral package uh, which is uh, available over on npm and I'll leave a link for that in the course links but this allows us to take a value and uh, change it around in terms of its numeral value so I'm going to go ahead and import numeral from numeral and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in that numeral import and I'm going to go ahead and format this in a certain way essentially what I want to do is give this commas so you can see here that if we just switch the user points over to the formatted points computed property, you'll see uh, you saw a flicker of it there. We get 1000. So this is a standard thing that you would do. If you wanted a computed value based on a prop that you pass in, you would do this. But like we are looking at, we're looking at the composition API. How would we do this? Well, let's just take this line here because I just want to have to write that out again. And let's bring in our setup method and see how we would do this using the composition API. And then we're going to talk about some of the issues that you'll find when you're trying to access prop values. Now, the setup API, uh, the setup function, as well as other things, takes in or receives in your list of props. So let's just log out our props here and just temporarily comment out what we have in our template. And let's give this a refresh. And you can see here that for both of the users, we're receiving in an object with user, with the ID, with the name and the points. So you can see the props is giving us exactly what we would expect. So now what we can do is we can create a computed property returning this value. And we already know how to do that. We go ahead and create out the name of the computed property. We use computed, so let's make sure we import computed here from the view composition API package, or just view if you're using view three already. And we're just gonna take this and we're gonna use numeral as we normally would to return, not this user points, because remember we don't have context, uh, this in context in setup. Instead, what we do is we reference props user points like so. So now this, as long as we return it so it can be used in our template, like so, it's gonna have exactly the same effect. We've just used the props that have been sent down from the setup method. So you can see after a couple of seconds, that goes ahead and updates as we normally would. So this is the equivalent of what we just did with the options API. Now, just to finish this off, I want to talk about the reactivity of props. We already know that if we don't have a setup method and we just have a component that exists to output these values, this will work in exactly the same way. However, what happens if we wanted to take a prop value, perhaps modify it in some way and then return it to our template? Now, that's exactly the same as a computed property. So by the end of this, we'll realize that a computed property is exactly what we need. But I just wanted to run over this just so we understand the reactivity of the props that are passed in. So I'm going to go ahead and output points just here. And let's see what happens when we create out a points variable and we assign to this from our props the user points and then go ahead and return it so let's go ahead and return points just here and see what happens so we're taking the prop value and we're returning it to the template and by doing that we give that a refresh after two seconds nothing happens because we have of course lost reactivity because props is a reactive object so by destructuring it and receiving or taking out this information we've lost reactivity for this altogether now you might think well maybe i could use ref maybe i could wrap this in ref well that's not going to work it won't update this 
in the same way and for the same reason because at this point we've already destructured the props reactivity or destructured props and lost reactivity and therefore using ref will have no effect at all it will have an effect if you update this again after another time so for example if we set a timeout in here now let's say for two seconds to then go points value equals 2000 that would then work we just give that a refresh and that of course both of them are changed because we're applying this to both bits of data but you kind of get the idea this works now because we have it wrapped in a ref but any new prop value or any changes to the prop that we've passed down will not be reflected so if you did need to extract this out and maybe even just send this down with a different value and not access it by user points i can't find a reason why you'd want to do that but you would reach for a computed property if you wanted to do that so if you just wanted to rename this for whatever reason you would just go ahead and return props user points from that computed property and then you would go ahead and pass that down so let's just fix that up real quick and if we come over and give that a refresh we have our reactivity back and we know that that's the case because computed will re-invoke this closure whenever anything uh, deeply nested inside of props is updated so when we do update the points this will be re-invoked and then of course sent down to our template and our reactivity will continue but to be honest if you are just representing the data from props inside of a template you just need to define your props out you don't need to worry about doing any of this as we saw from a couple of examples ago now a little bit later we'll also look at watching props as well because that can be really useful if we want to maybe make an HTTP request to an API when a prop is updated but we'll get to that a little bit later.